It's clear. The New Testament is written completely based on Old Testament stuff, but selective. Let me give you an example. No more killing God in the New Testament. There's no more God that can kill anybody. God don't want you to kill nobody. God's not going to kill anybody. It's not going to happen. That's out. Other thing that is not in the new, that's in the old. No more holy land. No more temple. No more priests. No more divine kings. This is about a kingdom that doesn't claim any one nation except the nation that Christians are living in. And they claim the kingdom by the love they show, not by the property, wealth, or war they can bring into the world. So a kingdom based not on land and war and empire, landless except for where you're at and making it happen by how you love each other, that's the new. That's different from the old. The old was committed to the covenant, the land, Palestine, the temple. Uh, Jesus' people figured out that's a dead end. From a dead tree on a tree in the first century, empire is a dead end. Who would have thought his face and his name is on the hearts and breaths of generations of U.S. warriors going off to kill people? Terrible. We got that wrong. Does anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. When I think of the three major religions that come out of the Middle East, the worst one at following the founder has to be the Christians. Really? I mean, like, Abraham, you know, you're Jewish, you gotta get along with your neighbors, but if someone treats you bad, you got a right to defend yourself. Muhammad wrote the Quran uh, after he experienced and their people experienced the failure of Christianity to live up to what Jesus told them to do. So of the three major religions, the worst in practice, it's got to be Christians. Really. Muhammad had a reasonable position with the state and governments to try to live with each other. We don't. No, no. we we're against wealth, we're against war, we're against the empire. That's what the man who we put on the cross, who then the Romans put on the cross, and we believe in. But on the other hand, we are the best crucifiers in the world today. This does not work. It's inauthentic. Which is like par for the course in a world that is based on inauthentic stuff that's literally killing the life forces on the planet. We should do something about this. Fatigue. So, what? I'm thinking. Like, so I feel like a lot of people believe in religion because like, because of what comes after a lot of people will say, I'm following this so I can get to this. You know what I mean? Is that so much a big deal for you as opposed to like following it so I can be this right now in this current moment? Like you said, so like you can know how to love or love and like personal integrity and stuff like that. Like, is it so much about that for you or is it more about the after? You know what I mean? No, it's for the love and practice, okay. not the after. Okay, so what do you think about the after? Like, how big Way overrated. Of okay. Uh, not even that important. Let me explain. When we say the Our Father, uh, we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? Okay. On earth as it is where? In a, so the direction of heaven in the Our Father is to bring it where? Okay. On earth. Uh... Seems like we should be about kingdom on earth stuff here and leave it to God to take care of whatever eternity means. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, the kingdom work, the, old, the, old, the New Testament is filled with kingdom terms that have to do with doing it despite 
whoever puts people on crosses. Despite whoever runs the world and is feeding the world. We're supposed to bring that kingdom now. It ain't for some other time. And I am rather content now that I am, I divide the world into flat earth versus universe. This text was written during the flat earth time. It doesn't mean they're any less smarter. They knew a lot. They knew all they needed to know about the human heart and how to live. But we live in a universe that's so much bigger than the flat earth scene. Just giant. It's amazing how big creation is. Staggering. Uh, that's how big God is. Uh, so the God in this book uh, is uh, uh, all about finding God in, uh, in being human. And knowing God is a lot bigger than humans. I mean, I'm modern. I know God is big. I also know this book tells us that we can be connected with the big God by being the best human being we can. Jesus isn't about being part of the Trinity. And Jesus is about what a human being looks like when they're fulfilling what God wants them to do as human beings. This, this side of the grave is where we're supposed to leave the mark. Leave the rest of it up to whoever created the universe. A lot bigger than us. Yeah. One of the things that are common between flat earth people and people after them is that the most important things in human life are invisible. Like, uh, for example, uh, I know with absolute certainty that my father and my mother loved me. And there ain't no way I could show you or prove that in any scientific way. But that's more important and real to me than my right foot. That was true in the first century. It's true today. Uh, our arrogance is that we think we can figure everything out. When the truth of this book tells us the things that are most important about being human is invisible. Love. Yeah. Invisible. Yet as real as anything. And that is saying, that's true in the, uh, in the universe world too. Uh, and they know this, and that's how they wrote to us about how to be human. In the context of war and empire, and destruction, and greed, and all the things we're dealing with. The, the, the quality of human beings and the way we can sin have not changed except the, our ability, our how big it is, how, how now we're interfacing with the life forces of the damn planet, which they never could have done on the Romans Empire. Uh, and we're tinkering with what we call eternity, whether the species will survive or not. The risks are big. Because I'm a person of science. Uh, so are you. You all are figuring out like, whoa, this doesn't make sense. You know, you, you pee in the water, you have to drink it. What, 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 what's hard to understand with that? Uh, but we're doing it badly. Real bad. Yeah, so good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I wish I could tell you more. I, I, I'm convinced that, that uh, if we learn how to be human with each other, we can learn how to be humane and uh, coexist with the planet. I just do know that. Yeah. Um, do you believe in hell in the afterlife or just an eternal emptiness? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I uh, uh, do. I believe in hell. You know, I I like to. I like to. I think hell exists. I don't think anybody's there. And the reason I say that is like, well, how good is Jesus's blood or not? Does it cover it or not? So I'm going to give Jesus the benefit of the doubt. 
and it's all covered. But hey, it still doesn't help me. I want to be a good human being. I want to proactively be something I want to be. Not because I'm going to go to hell. I mean, who cares? I mean, really. I, but I don't need help. Hell doesn't, it's not a very convincing argument for me. Uh, so that's why I don't think anybody's there. But I do know we, we have a purpose and meaning and I can create hell right here by the way I behave and how I've hurt people and how people have hurt me. I mean, those are, if, there, if there is a hell in eternity, that's, it's connected to that. And I, uh, I want to avoid that. That isn't good. I could do better. We can do better. Yeah. If you don't think there's anyone in hell, you don't think there are bad enough people to deserve to go to hell? You think they no, I think there are bad enough people who deserve to go to hell. What you haven't heard me say is, do we take the blood of Jesus seriously or not? And if I take the blood of Jesus seriously, I'm supposed to love like Jesus. So whether you believe in hell or not, if you're not loving like Jesus, who the hell cares? <laughs> All right, yeah. I got it. Good, good. <laughs> so I, I, I like totally get behind the loving everyone and the trying to be your best self and this and creating the best we can be right here, right now. But it's like, do you think people can still do that if they don't? practice religion if i don't actively read the new testament and pray every night like does that mean that i can't like still oh absolutely not there are people at our house you don't have to be catholic to be a catholic worker you don't have to be christian to be a catholic worker you gotta have some affinity for jesus that's basic uh but uh no we have people who don't have any faith at all who join us uh I believe I I believe that when I'm sharing in the work of the works of mercy, that's the kingdom being manifested, regardless of our intentions. Uh, and uh, all of us know all of us who are part of the Catholic worker either drink the Kool Aid and believe we're serving Jesus, because that's what we say, or they pretend with us that we're serving Jesus, because that's the party line. And if we're doing the party line, uh, I'm okay, and I don't care what people are thinking. As long as we're acting in unison, that's loving and caring. Do I think that matters? Yeah. Do I think it matters if we all believe the same thing? Absolutely not. So how how did you align with organized religion? Like, would you consider like what you believe in? Is it like? Are you just more into the idea or more of like the rigid, like go to church at Sunday, 8 a.m., pray, do this, do that? Because that's where, not my issues, but just like my, I don't know. Struggle? My, my struggle with religion in general is the organized part and how I feel like organized religion has caused a lot of bad things, than more bad than good, I would say just in the very existence of itself and like how. That's clearly where I'm at. Okay. If you haven't heard that yet, you know, I mean, am I not saying this as okay. loud as I can? Okay. I got the it. most got dangerous it. human beings on the planet are American Christians. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. We're on the same page. Okay, we're on the same page. And I have the extra burden to saying, oh my God, I have to be a Christian in a time when Christianity is so vilified by Christians. It's a bummer. Oh, God. All right. I measure my success by the dead Jew on a tree in the first century. Well, that is an enigma. That is not a pretty sight. Uh, what is that all about? And I... It... It's grounded me into what I believe is what I need to do as the best human being on the planet right now. And my tradition is the worst and the most dangerous to the planet. Now, if I was born a Muslim in a Middle East country, I'd probably have a different perspective. I'm okay with that. I hope there are people with different perspectives. 
They've got to be better than us. And if they want to be like us, too bad. <laughs> We're the wrong people to emulate ourselves. This is our, I'm born at this time. I didn't choose to be born at this time, but this is the time to be the person I'm meant to be. And I'm convinced I'm meant to be a disgruntled Catholic priest, 72 years old, in the middle of Iowa, yelling and screaming about how badly we're doing it. And at the same time, earning my way as a human being by serving the poor in my midst, in the Des Moines area, living in community. Really hard stuff. I think it's noble and heroic. I do think we ought to live lives that are noble and heroic. Now the trick is, what is it that you are living your life for that is noble and heroic? My father lived a noble and heroic uh, faith, uh, and he never was a, a, a communist like me. Uh, he was a World War II vet. Uh, he. Uh, taught and coached high school at Dowling. And I, I was brought up to uh, see that as a noble and heroic thing to be a coach and a teacher. Uh, 